Today is the 14th of March, uh, 2012. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm with the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. We're doing a home interview today in Liverpool, New York. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and date and place of birth, please? Herbert Otto Schultz. And your uh, date and place of birth? It's, uh, 21st of September, 1914, Syracuse. And, <laughs> and uh, did you attend school in Syracuse? Did you go through a school in Syracuse? Oh, yes. I went, went through school at uh, Holy Trinity School on the north side. And you graduated from high school there? Graduated from vocational high school at that time. And uh, do you recall what year you graduated from high school? Yeah, 1932. In 32. At that point, did you go on to college or did you go to work? No, I went to work. And what kind of work did you do? I was a clerk, a clerk in the Continental Cane Company, stockroom clerk. All right. And what type of uh, business was that? Yeah, canes, you know, sitting canes. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. And uh, did you go on to college at some point, or? No. Uh, I, I worked. I worked there from thirty-three to nineteen thirty-six when my father's business picked up. And uh, I, during the summer time, I, I, I gave all my money to. To my parents, you see, mm -hmm. and I went to college, and he supported me there. And I went, went to Syracuse University in 1936 to 1939. I was in a sophomore graduate when I was a, out of 81 something students. I think three of us passed his physical exam at that time. <clears throat> it was that strict. Now, did did you? Uh... Did you enlist or did, were you drafted? No, no. I, 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 I enlisted. Enlisted. Flying cadet. All right. Had you ever flown before? Had you ever flown at all before? Oh, yeah. There's a number of flights out at Syracuse Air, Airport, Amboy Airport. Mm hmm. Were and, you? <clears throat> well, I started building model airplanes when I. When I was in grammar school, mm -hmm. it was always in my mind. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have a, a, a private pilot's license before? You... No. All right. And you enlisted in the uh, Air Cadet program, and where did they send you? San Antonio. It, it was uh, Randolph Field at that time. What was that? Your first time away from home? Yeah. And uh, when was it you went in? February. February. And what was it like at San Antonio? Oh, a nice place. Mm -hmm. San Antonio, very, very, very nice. Uh, we, we usually had Saturdays off flying cadets. Mm -hmm. We took the bus and go in there and they had a, a club for cadets at one of the hotels. And we either go to a movie or just bum around the city just, just, just to uh, get away from the military environment environment for a while. Mm -hmm. Now your cadet program, did you have a, a ground school first before oh, you started yeah. flying? No, it's, it's, uh, ground school that we had, ground school and flying. And what type of airplane did you train on? The PT-13. That was biplane. With <coughs> that, was <coughs> excuse me. Oh, was that a steerman? Steer, steerman. Was a steerman. Yeah. Oh, that was fun to fly. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> how how long did it take you to solo? How many hours? Oh, oh I forget. Uh, I, th I think it's around twelve hours, something like that. Mm-hmm. So you, you flew the Stearman, yeah, yeah. and once you completed that phase of your training, 
What happened next? Did you stay right there? No, no, we went to basic. The rhino field was laid out like this. The primary phase was up here. Yeah. On the west side. And the, the basic was the, the BT-9. North American with fixed landing gear and a controllable pitch prop, which was big in those days, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when we graduated from there. Now, how, lo how long did it take you from? Uh, three months. Three months? And how many hours did you have at that point? Do you recall? Oh, uh, I don't recall now. I forget. All right. So you you after after we graduated from uh, basic we called it mm -hmm. primary basic, then we were sent to advanced school on the other side of San Antonio at Kelly Field. All right. And uh, we had the the AT6 advanced trainer. Okay, that was a pretty big airplane, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it, it, no, it was like the BT-9, except the, the landing gear, controllable pitch, pitch prop, mm -hmm. and flaps and things like that. Uh, that, that was, back in those days, it was big, big sure. time, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you graduated? Uh, in November 39. Okay, from your advanced school, and you were commissioned at that point? Yes, second lieutenant, and, my, and I was sent to Langley Field. And, and you received your wings at that point? Yeah. And you went to Langley Field, and uh, what did you do at Langley? I flew in a, a third observation squadron. Uh, my memory at times, I can't remember, we're talking about something I uh, knew very well then. I can't recall now what they called it at, at the uh, 040, yeah, 047 observation. It was a three-seater. Oh, okay. It, it, it was now, a monoplane. It was a monoplane, all right. And, and uh, that airplane was made out here in Buffalo at that time. And was that the only type of plane you flew there? No, I also flew the, yeah, uh, uh, what, what, what we call the, the Cessna. Hi, you know, there's a little oh, place. Oh, I, yeah. I think they called it a gull wing, or was that? Yeah. All right. And then the V-10, was, that, that came into the Air Force, Air Corps at that time, 1933. Uh, Two engine bomber. Oh, so so you were flying uh, multi engine also. Yeah. Now how long how long were you you based out of Kelly Field? <clears throat> well, Kelly Field was three months again at Advanced Strike School, and then the Third Observation Squadron when I was assigned there in nineteen forty. Uh, all right, off the bat, get my traveling bag. We were 10 months out in the field of maneuvers, you know, preparing for war that Roosevelt set up for us. And uh, we, we were all over the eastern United States. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was very interesting. And I'm missing it at it, 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 it Langley Field at that time as an observation plane. We flew, uh, it was a thousand foot wire, a steel cable, uh, 30 by 90, I forget how, a big flag target oh, yeah. behind us, yeah. And the anti aircraft would, what would shoot at get, it. Yeah, uh, shoot at it. We practiced it. That was, that was our mission. Now, do you remember whereabouts you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Yeah. We were at Barksdale Field. I was, I'd been transferred to Barksdale Field. And uh, I never heard I had two classmates over. I was married, I was married at that time. Oh, what, what year did you get married? 
1940 or? Uh, 1941. 41? And <clears throat> in May. And we were, uh, we were practicing a field when uh, uh, having dinner, when all of a sudden the radio we were here we were interrupt this program. Pearl Harbor is under attack. This is not a exercise. This is we are under attack. Mm -hmm. And so we were ordered out to the base. And as we came up to the base, machine guns were trained in this all as everybody's running around going mad. Wow. And it was it was almost uh, a circus. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's where I was then at that time. Then, then within months, uh, I received uh, my orders to go to, to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm -hmm. Curtin Field, the Bombardier Training School. And when I got there, I was given command of the bomb pro approach uh, uh, school, which is where we train pilots. Mm -hmm. to fly the multi-engine bombers that we call a C-45 today, two-engine, uh, uh, I forget, that airplane was made out here in Buffalo, I forget that right now. Well, anyway. Uh, was that a Curtis? Was that? No. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that strange? The name escapes me right now. But uh, there was a, 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 a curtain of field back in 1941. Uh, so you were in charge of the training company? Yeah. And what rank were you at that point? I was a major at that point. Oh, you were a major already? Oh, wait a minute. I, good Lord. I was a captain, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was promoted to major at that point. All right. So and you were a uh, captain, and then you became a major yeah. at that point. All right. And um, how long were you there for? I was there uh, until forty-four. And they. Sh uh, I was then. I was ordered to. to uh, what they call the Eighth Air Force at that time <coughs> in in Germany. Uh, okay, so so you you uh, traveled overseas to overseas England by ship. Oh, you went by ship. Yeah. Okay, and once you landed in England. Oh wait a minute. Uh, the chronology escapes you for a moment. I went, when was the airlift? Was it that? Oh, the Berlin airlift was in uh, 47. 47, yeah. Yeah, I was sent up there with the airlift. That, that my family came with me. Okay. I had two children at that time. Okay. Karen, my, my oldest one here, and my son Bernard, who died last year. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, but when you, but in 1944, you were attached to the Eighth Air Force then. Uh, when I when I came back, I was assigned to Marshfield in California, and from there I went to the Command and Staff School and graduated from there, and then I was sent to Germany again with the Office of Special Investigation (OSI). And what year was that? Was yeah, that was forty-eight. Forty-eight. Okay, uh, let me just go back to uh, World War II. You were you with the Eighth Air, Air Force? Yes, I, I, I was a squadron commander, and then I was promoted, decided for outstanding leadership in combat operations, and okay. promoted to lieutenant colonel, and uh, made deputy group commander. We had three squadrons. Okay, what what squadron numbers were they? Do you recall? Four twelve. And then, and I was made uh, deputy group commander, 96 bomb group at that time. And uh, I flew 29 combat missions. 
and Lenin and uh, now what what type of plane did you fly your B mission? B seventeen. Oh, B seventeen. Well, that was at Albuquerque back in forty two, uh, forty two, forty three. I was sent out in the in the uh, for heaven's sake the B. B24. What was it? It, it was a four engine. The B24? TL, B24, I think they were. Okay. And, and uh, yeah. But you, you flew 29 missions with the 8th Air Force. The B17. Now, did you fly mostly the same aircraft? Did you? Did you have uh, an airplane that was had a name on it that you flew most of the time? No, I I was I was in the bomber stream, you know. We formed up first. I had I, I led my squadron formed up into the group. Mm -hmm. Then when I was group commander, I had I, I had the three squadrons behind me, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I had a, a, a series of, of division leads, mm -hmm. third division, third air division, and uh, a couple of, of Air Force first one in. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yeah, there were interesting missions. <laughs> now, uh, were you ever under attack or hit by flak? Oh, yes, my third mission. We're sitting there, we're going along. I thought it was east of Berlin at that time, west of Berlin. And uh, all of a sudden, I said, so and so, uh, get back information. He pulled off. And all of a sudden, he starts screaming, bandits, bandits. And at that time, here comes this message script, oh, and bang, the, 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 the hats in front of us exploded. And, and I watched him go away. I said, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> and we, we were on the test air, but we didn't lose any at that time. That aircraft that was hit, did everybody get out? Or yeah, okay. Well, we we lost we lost a number of them. Mm -hmm. We got hit by flak. Yep. We had flak, weather, mechanical trouble. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, those were the things you had to contend against. And I was very fortunate they came back. Were you ever wounded at all? No, thank the Lord. What about uh, other members on y on your aircraft? Oh yes, uh, uh, when the Messerschmitt attacked us, uh, one of my gunners in the, in, 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 the, in the back got hit in the chest. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Flack hit, hit our airplane and uh, wounded the bombardier. But mm -hmm. thank I, I, I come out on the scratch. Mm -hmm. What was your worst mission? Do you recall? Was was the third mission the worst one? Or oh no no, we were going to Berlin. And the Earth, Eighth Air Force weather predicted it was going to be cloudy and all that stuff and bad weather, but there was an opening, for eight thousand feet, so and so, whatnot, and and above that would be clear. Well, we bombed at twenty thousand feet, mm -hmm. twenty-two thousand feet. So sure, Berger were going to all of a sudden buttermilk clouds. All of a sudden, we were flying on instruments, and I thought, why? I was waiting for. Recall, you know, come right back to base, and then and, and the clouds separated. And all of a sudden, here comes the, the the first division, head on with us. Oh. and so I, I, as leader, I, I said, Vampire Red was my code name. I said, thirty degrees to the left, to the right, down, and uh, we went. We lost twelve airplanes, both. Groups at that time, air collision. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. But that was the only time we 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 really hit it. Hmm. Did you ever see any of those uh, 
German jets? Oh yeah. Oh, we we were on a mission uh, to bomb a, a target in Chemnitz. That's near the border of Switzerland. We were on the bomb run. All of a sudden, here comes this airplane. It just just grew larger and went down and, and, and turned down the way. I thought, what the hell is that? They had new propellers, you know. Mm -hmm. We go, uh, we, we we went to Russia. I was in a bombing mission to Russia. Russia, and when we got back to our base, we were there three days. Then we bombed the t target uh, near in Hungary, Miskolc. They had a tank factory there. Mm -hmm. Landed in Italy, and then we got back to. Uh, Group intelligence there. We found out they were Messerschmitts. They just introduced into the war, and they didn't fire a shot incidentally. And we found out later there was a training school for them. Oh. So he came in and made a run at us and pulled pull away. But I thought, boy, if they put those in the operation, we've had it. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord they had difficulties. It seems that at that time uh, they didn't. They didn't. Get formations, you know, the firing, mm -hmm. and once they once they got in there, they 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 were a tough customer to tangle with, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was the only time that one hit a, hit us. It was just a tra the trainers. Yep. And you flew twenty nine missions. Yeah. What was your last mission? Do you recall? I know I come back. The colonel said, Grammy, he says, Well, you, you made it, you know. I volunteered for 30 missions. He says, You're going back home to Willie, my wife, you know. Uh -huh. Like that. Because we lost, that was the time we lost the 12 aircraft, you know. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah. And uh, we had we had a number of ours being shot down, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and a very good friend of mine, he, he he was knocked down at a target near oh where the devil was it west of Berlin. I can't think of the name right now, but he didn't come back. Uh, another time, they were, were, were going in the southern part of Germany, Munich, whatnot. There, Munich was was a, a bad. Three times I went there. Mm -hmm. Now, what were you bombing there? Were they factories or? Yeah, no, they were bombing the city. Yeah. And I used to go the first time on there. Dresden. I said, look at the colonel. I said, Colonel, this is not a military target. This is the Florence of Germany. It's a, it's a culture city. All these old places, wouldn't it? He says, keep your mouth shut. You know, that's the target. I said, this stinks. And sure enough, that was one mission that was a slaughter. We slaughtered a lot of, of, of people, mm -hmm. men, women, and children, non combatants. You see. Mm -hmm. I wasn't very proud of that mission, uh, but we bombed open so we, Hamburg, bombed the city, destroyed the city, destroyed the city, and killed Germans. I said, "This stinks." You keep your mouth shut. There was orders mm -hmm. came up from above, but uh, other than that, all I can say is we had. Some missions where we weren't hit at all, you know, mm -hmm. and that was very relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what did you think of the B-17? Oh, that was a wonderful airplane. Mm -hmm. I was in B-24s and B-17s. B-24 is a four-engine consolidated, mm -hmm. and uh, but they had few. Hoses running through the on the side of the bomb bay, when they get hit, bang! Uh -huh. And uh, 
when I was sent to Germany for the airlift, I'll never forget it. We were on the ship. And uh, I met a hook up an army major. We were sitting there, and then it took us seven days across the ocean. It took us seven hours coming back from my airplane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, where are you going? I said, I don't know. I'm going to Wiesbaden. Headquarters, you're safe. And I said, it's Air Force to Zero. I said, well, where, well, you know. I said, I'd like to go to, to Munich. Uh, what was that base they had there? It was the Randolph Field of German Air Force, where they had their training school. I said, yeah, my mother was born and raised just north of Germany. Uh, kissing and they call it. Beautiful. Uh, uh, oh, a bot as a bath. Uh, I can't recall the name right now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was it was uh, people to go that are rest up, you know, and uh, massages and all these things like this and uh -huh. baths, bath, bot kissing, kissing it, bath means bot means bath in German. Was that anywhere near the city of Würzburg? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was within a hundred miles, something like okay. that. Yeah. Now, when did uh, when did they send you back home after your 29th mission? Do you recall? Oh yeah. He said, "Well, they call me Dutch at that time in Scotland. Well, Dutch, a colonel embraced me." He said, you made it, we're going. I said, well, I got one more mission, you know. Now you're going back to to Willie. We had, that's when we, I forget what mission it was. Uh, we had, we lost a number of, of, of planes, mm -hmm. uh, three or four planes, something like that. He said, you're going back to, oh, he was sick and I took his place, my last mission. Uh -huh. And they came back. He says, "You're going home. You've done. you done your, your job." There used to be 20 missions, and then they went 25 and 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, yeah, I remember coming back. That's that's when we came back across the ocean in seven hours. <laughs> now, uh, were you back in the states when President Roosevelt was died? Yeah. I was at Marchfield at that time. Okay. That's back in, what was it, 40? What well, was in, uh, I think it was April, April of 45, he passed away. And then the war in Europe ended in May. 45. Yeah, that's right. Because I, you know, I, I went from March to, to the Air Command and Staff School, and then I went to Germany. Okay. Now, uh, when the war was still on and you were in the States, the, the war had ended in Europe, was there any talk about sending you to the Pacific at all? Oh yeah, I volunteered for the Pacific area, you see. Mm -hmm. I mean, came in there and at that time they had these tests, the atomic tests after we dropped the bomb uh, on Hiroshima. Okay. And uh, a number of my classmates who were in that test group flew in the clouds and they explode these bombs at Bikini. Yes. And they flew in there come back. They died of, of the effects of radiation. Oh. So I'll never forget it. Uh, I was in the, the commander's office one time. Uh, I was supposed to go, go to, to Japan. Mm -hmm. And the general whom I knew, uh, I met back in the thirties out here at the airport, he 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 had the air squadron at that time was operating. And yeah, my father took me out there and introduced me. I was a teenager then. Uh huh. And uh, what can I do to get in the, get in the Air Force and all that stuff? Uh, he was in command of the fourth the fourth Air Force at that time, I think. And he came into to, to the colonel's office. He said, well, Phil, how, how are you? Fine, yeah. And we got to conversing, and all of a sudden, he said, well, what, 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 what are you doing here? I said, getting ready to pack up and go 
to Japan. Well, wait a minute, what for? Oh yeah, that was for the bikini test. Uh-huh. And uh, I said, my wife is sick, she's in the hospital. I said, I've got two children. I'm in a hell of a fix. He says, well, can you defer him? Well, the, the base commander, he was the colonel, you know, Stanton T. Smith. Yep, 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 so we can't change the orders now. The general walked over to the desk, picked up the telephone, and called San Francisco headquarters. And on this mission here, over here, so there's a, a, a man, Schultz, he says, take his name off the shipping list. I said, thank you, General. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that did. it did. It say, that's where this, my classmates were not there. And all these people, they flew into this explosive area. Mm -hmm. They got sick and died from it. Not all of them, but uh, yeah. quite a few of them. Now, when you had spoken to the general, did he remember meeting you back when you were a teenager? No. God. Because when we were in maneuvers in 1940, uh, he was on uh, up this was uh, the station Langley Field. Uh huh. And uh, we were in maneuvers. I got to know him then. I flew him around. Alabama and all that when we were down south, Louisiana, and I think it was Crowley or something like that. But uh, anyway, it's strange in the Air Force, you, you know, you cross and then you never see him again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that was an interesting experience. Now, do you want to tell me about the Berlin Airlift? Oh, yeah. Should, uh, should I let him know? Yeah, out? yes. No, no. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, on the ship I had a, an interesting experience. Uh, I told you how I met this major. It was an attack in tanks in World War II in Germany. Mm -hmm. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Wiesbaden to find out where I'm going to be assigned. Now, where would you like to go? I said, down near in Munich. But I, I, <clears throat> I isn't it strange? I can't recall this is the biggest air base, one of the Randolph Field of German Air Force. What, was it Rhine Main? No, Rhine Main was in the middle up by Frankfurt. And this is Munich is way in the south. Uh, so I mentioned the faces when he mentioned he he had been over there before, and and he just, this is a second tour back to Germany. Uh, he said, "Don't go to Rheinmain or Erding." I said, "Why not?" He says, "The two commanders are uh, notorious for cutting their staff officers' throats and whatnot," you know. I said, it'd be just my luck to get the winner. Sure enough, I come over and uh, I, uh, I get in the Air Force headquarters. Who are you? So the kind of says, what are you doing over here? I said, I've been assigned over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I first went into a lot of this gobbledygook in the Air Force. It's just like any other outfit, you know, they have the tie ups and whatnot. He says, well, we have an opening at Erding. And I said, well, uh, uh, can, can I go down here to, to this air base in, near Munich, you know, I was telling you about the Randall Field of Germany. Tempelhof, I think is what they call it. Tempelhof. Anyway, I uh, said, well, well, we'll send you to to Ryan Main. Ryan Main I said, well, those are the two we're told to stay away from. Sure enough I was designed there. And sure enough that's where this this colonel was in command. Didn't like Inspector General. That's when the Air Force uh, the, the the airlift was going on. Mm -hmm. And that, 
still cut there. So. Did now? Did you fly some missions on the airlift? Oh yeah. The, the, what is it? The C fifty. Say C fifty four. Say something like that. Four engines. Mm -hmm. Now, what were you flying? What kind of cargo were you carrying? Food. Then to, to Berlin, you know, mm -hmm. at the time. The Russians had really sealed it off. Uh, yeah, I, I, I flew, gosh, I can't recall how many missions. That's co pilot. Okay. Because I was a staff officer, not in the airlift mm -hmm. task force. For staff also, and I relieved pilots that were flying. Just go up Berlin, over, I forget the, the three checkpoints, uh, back again, and then rest up a couple hours, then go back up again. And uh, I was a relief pilot. Were you flying night missions too, or just day missions? Day missions. I went. Several times we had Russian fighters when we got up near Berlin. Russian fighters come around and buzz us when they give them <laughs> <laughs> Now, oh, let me ask you this before I forget. What was it like when uh, there was the transition from the uh, Army Air Force to the Air Force? I think that happened in 1947. Yeah, that's when I was at the staff school mm -hmm. in, in uh, Louisiana. I was in Alabama, and uh, they come up, and they what what type of uniforms we're going to wear, you know, stuff like this, and we're going to come, we're it's the United States Air Force, and everybody cheered, you know, and, uh, and it was Air Corps at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know I I know the, uh, the uniform changed to a blue uniform at oh, that point. Yeah. Didn't that, that the pink and greens was a beautiful uniform, you know, mm -hmm. and the blues. I said, we're a bunch of bus drivers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like the uniform. Yeah. The Luftwaffe had beautiful uniforms. And I made a, I made a suggestion along that line, and I got the... <laughs> they didn't like that, huh? They didn't like that. Huh. Now, um, did you run into any any of the guys you, obviously with a 30-year career, guys you flew with during World War II, did your paths cross very much throughout your Air Force career? Yeah. Uh, we had a class reunion, oh, I forget, back in the 80s. And, uh, I met several of them. They're all gone now. Uh -huh. They all died out. Are you the last one? I'm an old goat, yeah. Survivor. Hmm. As the years have gone by, just imperceptibly, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, did you, are you a member of the uh, Eighth Air Force Association? I don't, I don't know. I had any correspondence with them, no. Okay. All right. No, well, my, I had my classmates, some of them were, were affiliated. When they died off, I'd, I didn't have any more contact. Mm -hmm. I know the uh, the Eighth Air Force Association uh, is a pretty big pretty big outfit, and there's there's still a lot of members that yeah. are. Yeah, well, I, I get the Air, uh, air Force Times or the magazine. I still get it every month. Uh huh. Now, now after the Berlin airlift, of course that was in '47. And you retired in what, 1960? 61. 61. What uh, What was the Air Force like between 47 and 61? How, where, where, where were you stationed? Uh, well, uh, there was Langley Field, mm -hmm. Barksdale Field, in Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, Kirtland Field out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, then the staff, the command of staff school. That was in Louisiana. Then Germany okay. for three years. And then, uh, where, 
Marshfield in California. Okay. Now, now Germany, after the war, that was your your only overseas yeah. tour. Yeah. After. Uh, commander staff school and the commander staff school. Mm -hmm. Dutch. Uh, and the funniest part of it was, the commander of uh, uh, of uh, the unit back at Kelly Field was a Lieutenant Kennedy, and he had charge of uh, the small groups of pilots that are being trained. Uh, he had charge of overseeing their training. But when, when I came up there, he, he was at headquarters at that time. He said, Dutch, is you just frightened to Deutsch? I said, oh, you're going to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got to Germany. Uh -huh. And you were able to take your family to Germany? Yeah. yeah. Now, what was, what was Germany like back then? Was there still a lot of rebuilding going oh, on? Oh, it was devastated. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pitiful. And then under Eisenhower's orders, we had a uh, big prison camp, prisoner camps, you know, living out in the open fields, no trees, nothing. And uh, he, <clears throat> people were bringing food to them. He, he, he told the army, they, they, they shall not pass. And strict orders, you know, some, if I, well, I don't want to mention it, because it was atrocious. But uh, Now, what, what kind of prisoners were they? Prisoners of war. Okay, this and was... He changed it to the nomenclature from prisoners of war to un 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 uh, Prisoners were not in uniform, and they, they couldn't get any, you, you couldn't do certain things under international agreement, you know. Now this was after the war? This is after the war. What, what year was that? This is back in 48, I think. 48, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, some... some well, all sides had their, their, their tie-ups or whatnot, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the things we did over there were unspeakable. Just like it's going on over here now in Afghanistan, the sergeant goes in and wakes out a family. A little girl goes up and puts a pistol, bang! I would put this guy up in the firing squad and let him, let him have it, mm -hmm. see what it is if your bullets going into you. Mm. This is insane. Yeah. And they're being protected. Yeah. Now, uh, how were you treated by the German people after the war? Oh, got along with them fine. Mm -hmm. Very good. I got to know uh, people uh, in Riesbaden, which was headquarters Europe, where, where, I, where I was stationed after the airlift at Rhine Main. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, I had some wonderful associations. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, that was the Cold War period. Any encounters with the Russians at all? No. Uh, the, the Germans had some parades, I forget when it was. And one parade, they had uh, a fabricated tank, you know, and it only once without us. That's America was looking for allies out when Russia was acting up, I remember. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a year later, it came out that the, the tank was there again. Nicht ohne uns. Not without us, where were you? You know? Uh -huh. We finally woke up from our insane policy and in giving the Russians everything they wanted in Germany. Mm -hmm. mm. When uh, when you were overseas, uh, in, stationed in England, how were you treated by the English people? Oh, very distant. Really? Yeah. Uh, it, it was. There were no complaints. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it, it was cold. Cold reception. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Now, did you see any? 
USO shows or any any American entertainers? Oh yeah. I'll never forget it. On our, on our way back from Russia, we landed at Fosia in Italy, mm -hmm. and we went in, 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 into uh, to uh, what did I do? the name escapes me again. This big city, and they had about in a date and a number of others, you know, putting in a show for for the troops. The, oh. Uh, well, they were very, very well. All those, all those uh, soirees were very well accepted by the people. Uh huh. Bob Hope, all of them, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the, sure. No, we were, we were, we were, we were treated fine. I would say. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you uh, retired in 1961. Yeah. What did you do then? I came back and went to, to college and got my degree, finished my degree. Mm -hmm. I had three years when I left there. And I finished that and got a teacher's certificate and I got a job out of North Syracuse school systems where I taught German. My mother used to say, get in your retirement. He says, well, come on home. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I wrote to Boeing and all these other places in North America, classmates, high up in personnel. Sorry, Dutch, you know, we got all the pilots we need. <laughs> uh -huh. She said, come home. Well, go to school and, and get yourself certified to teach German. I said, yeah, I could do that. And I did that and successfully. I was out in our Syracuse school system for 18 years. I taught, I taught uh, German, American history, world history, mm -hmm. and, and one year English. And what year did you retire from that? Uh, after that, I just retired. Uh huh. And then I started getting age problems, my back. And things, my arms. Mm -hmm. Well, for for a ninety-seven year old, you look pretty pretty good and fit to me. <laughs> well, I I can't complain. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, did you stay in contact with any of? Obviously, yeah, you, you did they stay. Died off. Yeah, got off. Okay. Dan Skinner, Buck Freeman, Johnny Larkin, all of them for all of the states gone. Mm -hmm. I have no more contacts with him. Okay. And we have a, what they call the last man survivor. Yeah. Bottle of wine, you know. I don't know if I'm eligible for that or not. But uh, like I say, I lost all contact with my mm -hmm. classmates. Now, did you join any veterans organizations like the VFW or the Legion? Or? Oh, I was out here for years with the VFW in Salve. Mm hmm. But I, it just peeled off. I, I, I'm a charter member of the Onondaga Civic Symphony Orchestra. I played the violin. Oh, do you? And, uh, and in, in, in 1962, I got a letter from Bill Buckley. At that time, uh, I was making waves back here at the, now, uh, to join the Conservative Party. So I was a charter member and I helped to form it here. And I was chairman several times through the years, you know. Uh -huh. And we've done a lot of good. But the people that put the sleep over here, they believe everything they read in the newspapers, which are controlled, mm -hmm. and the telephone, the, the tele, what's the matter with me? The radio stations and, the, and uh, Television, mm -hmm. they're all controlled, and you get propaganda that's always left wing, always against Islam. Going to Iraq, we had no business in Iraq. You go into Afghanistan, the Russians were over there five years and pulled out before we got there. It was impossible, they couldn't mm -hmm. where they are for 11 years now, yeah. and getting worse. And now this Yahoo. Uh, Netanyahu comes over here, on into Iran, on into Iran. And, 
and now troops come back without an arm, a leg, eyes. Uh, uh, for what? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it makes you realize all these wars for nothing. Exactly. The same group on top, liberal, in control of our, our destiny, mm -hmm. of our federal and even local. When you take a look up the makeup of the people running our government and running our lives, telling them what you're going to do with penalty being punished, taxes, taxes on taxes, and and and, and now what does our media do? Attacks the ones who are work for the working people. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. for example, like like one Burkle. She has an excellent conservative record. The newspapers slang wherever they can, pessimistic, you know. Oh, she's on is a, in a, well, like I say, this country's going right down the tube. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why you, you fight. Oh, you got to, <clears throat> you're anti-American if you say anything, criticize the government, mm -hmm. anybody in the government. <clears throat> But I don't want to get into that field because it's a personal uh, opinion. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this um, in closing. How do you think your time in the service uh, changed or affected your life? Obviously with well, 30 years in the military it has. I learned, I learned a lot when I was in the service. I had experiences, good and bad. And coming back from when I was coming out of service, helped form the Conservative Party, <coughs> played, well, uh, played in the Savior Symphony, and I was active in them, and helped, helped them do the job they were cut out to do, and they're still doing it today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still active in, in the Conservative Party. Mm -hmm. I can't play the violin anymore. I did my Air Force exercises one time after I had a a, a bad spell of flu, and when, when I came to the push-ups, I said, of, instead of doing 15, I'll just do five today. Uh -huh. I just I push up, <coughs> uh -huh. uh, and I'm on the floor screaming for, for help upstairs. Uh, my wife come, we had to call an ambulance, and I was taken up to the hospital, and they said, well, you, you tore the cuss and explained it to me. I said, well, can we operate on that? He said, he said, can they operate on He said, it won't do you any good. He said, it'll tear loose right away again. Hmm. So I had to be very careful. I couldn't raise my arm for years. I can raise it now, but I've been active in push-up, getting off the chair, and I had to be careful once again. And my back is acting up, you know, mm -hmm. in the pelvis. Arthritis, I'm getting all the ravages of old age, let's face it. Uh -huh. <laughs> my, my doctor said, you're not, you're not 49 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one, last, one last thing I, I'd like, like you to do. Would you reach, can you reach behind you and, and get that picture of you and your wife? And I want to zoom in on that oh, with yeah. the camera. If you can just hold that up right in front of you, just like that, I can zoom in. And can you just tilt it back a little bit because I'm getting some glare. Uh, just a little more, I think. Oh, that's perfect right there. And uh, your wife's name was? Willie May. Willie May, all right. And do you recall when and where that picture was taken? That was taken in Albuquerque in 1943. All right. Okay. Let me, oh, let me ask you one, one more question. Do you still have your leather flight jacket? I gave that to my, my grandson. That was the old uniform. Uh-huh, yep. And greens. And the, the Air Force, like I said, looks like a bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, what was the question again? Oh, I asked you if uh, you still had your, your old flight jacket. Oh, no, I got my uniforms and everything. Mm -hmm. My flight jacket. Uh, your grandson's got it. Yeah. Well, I hope he takes very good care of it. You know, and now, <laughs> I had the third observation squad and I'm seeing on it, you know. Uh-huh. Oh, well, we had, it was a good life. Mm -hmm. sure now, um, is there anything else you'd like to add? That maybe we have we've skipped or anything. No, I say I went in a political field now. Uh, the people have been so misled by our media here today. They will vote the same scoundrels back into office that mm -hmm. promised to to make make everything right and make it worse. They make it worse, and they made them vote, vote them right back into office again. Yeah. They should do some thinking and remember what Samson did. To kill his enemies, he pulled the pillars and killed himself too, mm -hmm. along with them. And so the, the very same ones who are egging us on and one war after another and, and tear the Constitution up, they're going to suffer because there'll be nobody they can put, put the axe to anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much for your interview. Well, I, I enjoyed it very much.